what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here soon talking about halloween ends this video here again today going over michael myers and why does he return to haddonfield why would michael myers return to haddonfield all these years later if going off of the brief plot synopsis they don't even mention michael myers michael myers isn't referenced it just references laurie strode working on a memoir a boy named Corey cunningham being at the center of this presumably the focus uh like the like the synopsis is made clear like what some of the test screening reactions are making clear so why does michael myers come back to haddonfield all it mentions is that there's a there's a boy who is accused of a babysitting accident and Laurie Strode is working on a memoir. Then she's forced to confront some some past evil, evil, some past trauma. The only thing we've seen of Michael Myers as it pertains to his connection to the plot is that he, of course, does indeed show up at, in the movie at some point. But he seems very much so at this point to be on the back burner. So why does he come back? This is the thing that I've been talking about in a lot of my other videos where I stated how this time jump that they're doing puts us back in the scenario of, okay, well, why does Michael return now? Why didn't he return all these years prior? And given that it seemed like his return might have something to do with Corey Cunningham, he really wasn't going to return to Haddonfield is what I'm getting up, getting at. If he was never going to return to Haddonfield, what is it about Corey that causes him to return? So, again, if Corey is the main focus, something related to Corey should end up sparking the shape of re-emerging, correct? So let's pretend Michael doesn't just randomly return so this, this theory of mine can work. I'll continue the thought process of Corey being bullied into being evil because the town sees him as evil over the incident with the boy he babysat. So in order to give the working title of Cave Dweller some significance also, you can say that Michael will presumably be living in a cave or living in some type of sewer for the next four years. We actually do see a shot of Corey getting grabbed by Michael in a sewer anyway. So why michael vanished after the events in 2018 is going to be a thought i know for many people and i can't think of an answer to that other than that he was tired <laughs> or he just wanted to survive the night after that beating he took by that mob uh then after killing karen he's like i gotta get out of here so again knowing that the movie starts in 2019 must mean that uh, knowing that it starts in 2019 i'm going to say and Corey is babysitting this kid then it's gonna jump a couple more years later because we're again set four years later after the events of the last two movies primarily in this movie so and again knowing it starts in 2019 it's gonna of course jump a few more years to match up with the four-year time jump Corey could be a character that grows interested in michael due to the comparisons he hears around town even though he initially is nothing like michael again these accusations toward this boy can just be simply rooted in the fact that it was a it was a accident whatever happened while he was babysitting was not intentional but yet he is painted as this new boogeyman and the town won't let him be which ends up sparking him to snap so when they're treating him like the new michael once he snaps, he could start killing people, and then we obviously know people are going to die. Corey could start killing people and then desire to track Michael down, since in his mind, Haddonfield wants Michael around. Based on their accusations towards Corey, they seem to be completely content with being able to point the finger at some evil that they, they claim they want gone, but they're always trying to pin the finger on somebody for being a part of a problem. So the town could be divided based on a side believing Michael is dead. You could also throw in a side believing Michael is alive. You maybe even can divide them up into some people think Corey is innocent. Other people don't think Corey is innocent. Um, Corey, Corey could fall in the camp of thinking Michael's alive, obviously, and want to find Michael to bring him back to Haddonfield to kill everyone who has bullied him. Uh, Corey is, is again shown in the sewers during the teaser. Michael grabs him. This encounter could be what prompts Michael to return to Haddonfield. We also see Michael with all his fingers during the teaser, which is most likely not Michael, but must be Corey after he's stolen the Myers mask. But where did he get his overalls from? I'm assuming the movie will explain that as well. So we see how Karen was able to get Michael to follow her after his mask was taken from him. Just to use this really quick. Now... I'm sure that would be underwhelming for the shape to just return for his mask. But with Corey as the focus and the trailer footage showing Michael with all his fingers, which again, presumably is not Michael at that point, it's Corey. And considering that this trilogy has already made a big deal about Michael's bond with that mask, the mask being stolen seems like the logical conclusion as to why he would return. 
Corey Cunningham at some point in this movie going off of the fact that we see Michael Myers shown not matching matching how he should be looking again with his fingers and I think some people have pointed out a ring on the finger as well certain other things that's not Michael and in one of these shots when he's entering the room with Laurie Strode that presumably will end up being Corey Cunningham who ends up becoming this copycat killer and because he took Michael Myers mask after tracking Myers down Michael then returns to Haddonfield just to simply look for his mask probably kills a few people along the way on his pursuit of looking for his mask now some people again might find that to be underwhelming but that seems like the route they could potentially take and the reason that is very highly likely is again just going off of how we have seen them use this mask as a plot device to get michael to basically follow people around he went after those two uh journalists in or investigative journalists at the start of the 2018 movie for the mask after he broke out he went after Karen and followed her foolishly right into the mob trap after Karen took his mask later in the night in Halloween Kills. So seeing how he's been gone for four years with no intention to return, Corey Cunningham showing up in town with his mask must mean that he tracked Michael down, stole his mask after that encounter in the sewer. Michael, of course, would then want to go to Haddonfield just to get his mask. That honestly seems like one of the more logical things. He could obviously go back just for some random reason. But honestly, at this point, what, what would he be going back there for? Especially, again, considering Corey Cunningham becoming a copycat of sorts. He stole Michael's mask. <laughs> Michael is going to want to go get his mask back. Probably going to want to go kill Corey because he stole his mask. And then chaos will ensue from there. That's what ultimately will bring Michael Myers back to Haddonfield. That's why he returns. He returns because Corey Cunningham most likely stole his mask. And he has a connection with said mask. So he wants it back. Let me know what you guys think about all that down in the comment section below. What do you think would be the reason he returns other than that? If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you can never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to my social media accounts, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.